Thanks very much. Thank you very much. I want to start. I'm going to start with a note of gratitude. I'm going to start by thanking, and we're honored by the presence of Governor Wolf, Attorney General Shapiro, and Congressman Cartwright. Let's give them another round of applause for their leadership. I want to thank each of you for being here today to have this important discussion. As the Attorney General said, we're grateful to Wilkes College, Wilkes University. I'm showing my age, Mr. President. <laughs> President Khan, thank you for having us back here and uh, rescheduling this after we had to, had to postpone it from before uh, earlier this year. But we're grateful for your presence here today. And I also want to extend that gratitude to the President of the United States, Joe Biden. Let's give him a round of applause so he can hear it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the list, the list of things we could thank him for is too long. But just consider over the last 18 months what has happened. And I'm only going to mention three or four pieces of legislation. The American Rescue Plan lifted up families here in Luzerne County and all across our Commonwealth. Helped a lot of communities, and yet on the other side, they all voted against it. But the president led the way and we got that done. Then came the infrastructure bill, right? That bill, that bill that will repair roads and bridges and bring high-speed internet to so many communities. We're, we're just getting warmed up with that bill. We've barely seen the impact in just the first couple of months. We're going to be building bridges and lifting up communities with that legislation for years. The president led that. It would not have become law were it not for his leadership. And finally, and then I'll get to the, the subject of today's gathering. Finally, just three weeks ago now, we passed, passed the Inflation Reduction Act, and we, in one bill, in one bill will allow us to reduce the cost of prescription drugs for seniors by allowing Medicare for the first time ever to negotiate for lower prices and capping out-of-pocket costs. They said we could never do it. We could never beat the powerful corporate lobbies. They said it would never, ever happen. They said you could never pass a bill that would take the kind of steps we took to combat climate change. They said you could never do in that same bill the kind of deficit reduction, $300 billion in deficit reduction, in making sure huge multinational corporations are paying their fair share. They said it couldn't be done. Joe Biden said yes, and we got it done. And we're here today, we're here today to talk about a safer America, a safer Pennsylvania, a safer Northeastern Pennsylvania. And Congressman Cartwright walked through some of the, the issues that he's been working on, the investments he's made with his leadership. But this legislation, the, the Safer Communities Act, was one of those bills which they, they also said can never be passed, that you can never in Washington, because it hasn't happened in my lifetime, except one, one other time. You can never beat the gun lobby. They are too big, they are too powerful, you cannot beat them. Well, President Biden and Democrats and a few, a few Republicans came together with us and they decided to say, no, we're gonna get this done. We're gonna make sure that we don't surrender to gun violence. That's what Washington's been doing for too long, surrendering to the problem of gun violence. We don't do that in America. You look at the sweep of American history, whether it was war or depression or pandemic or whatever, whatever is coming in front of us, whatever challenge has been presented to the American people, we don't surrender to gun violence. We take it on and we make progress. But there are some in Washington who still want to surrender to the gun lobby, still want to surrender the problem, saying it's too complicated. It's been around a long time. We just have to get used to it. Well, we're not going to surrender. We're going to be here for safety, not surrender. And here's what the bill does. It enhance back, enhances background checks for 18 to 20-year-olds. 
It provides federal money for crisis intervention, like extreme risk protection orders in states. A lot of states might want to do it, didn't have the money to do it until this bill came along. It also addresses dating, the dating partner loophole so that women across the country were threatened by a dating partner. Working, making progress on that, still more to do on that issue as well. Funding community violence intervention programs, cracking down on gun trafficking, on and on and on. And guess what? Almost $11 billion, 10.8 to be exact, $10.8 billion for mental health. That has never happened in Washington in my lifetime. Never. And again, they said it couldn't be done. You can't beat the gun lobby. You can't beat the corporate lobbies. Well, it's President Joe Biden has shown with his leadership that we can take on any tough problem. Not solve it in one bill, not solve it with one action, but make good progress, as Americans always do. So we're grateful that he has demonstrated that kind of leadership. Not surrendering to a pandemic, not, not surrendering to economic challenges, and not surrendering to the plague of gun violence. We believe in safety. We're Americans. We're going to get this done. God bless you.